Welcome to our channel, where we embark on a journey through the wisdom of ancient thought, bringing together the Stoic philosophy and Christian teachings to uncover a profound truth. Today, we'll explore the connections that bridge the wisdom of Stoicism with the teachings of Jesus. Be sure to like and leave a comment. I'm going to be responding to everyone who shares their perspective. In the words of Hebrews 12, verse 11, it is certain that no discipline seems to be a source of joy at the moment, but rather another reason for sadness. However, later on, it produces a peaceful fruit of righteousness and peace in those who have been trained by it. This verse speaks to the idea that discipline and hardship, though challenging in the present, ultimately lead to inner peace and righteousness. Musonius Rufus adds depth to this notion when he states, If you accomplish something good with great effort, the work passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. This reminds us of the lasting impact of our choices and actions. Imagine walking the streets of ancient Rome, listening to Stoic philosophers like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, and Epictetus, discussing the nature of suffering and serenity. Meanwhile, in a secluded corner of Judea, a spiritual leader, Jesus, teaches about the kingdom of heaven and the path to inner peace. Despite the geographical and cultural differences, both scenarios converge on a profound truth. Our reality is not shaped by the world around us, but by the lens through which we see it. Seneca's question, why do you point out others' wounds when you are full of scars, resonates with Jesus' inquiry, why do you see the speck in your brother's eye and not notice the beam in your own? While it's essential to acknowledge that figures like Seneca were mortals with their flaws, and Jesus is seen by many as a divine figure, both their legacies continue to inspire and guide generations. In this material, we'll delve deeper into these resonances and explore the connections between Stoicism and Christianity. We invite you to revisit this content multiple times to absorb its profound message. The similarities between these philosophies offer a sense of familiarity, underscoring the universal truths that unite them, reminding us that wisdom knows no cultural or temporal boundaries. While the teachings may have emerged from distinct cultures and traditions, they both share roots in a universal truth, a truth that transcends time and space. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. Before we delve into the life and teachings of Jesus, let's first trace the origins of Stoicism, a philosophy that shares many aspects with Jesus' teachings. In the bustling streets of Athens during the 4th century BC, the cradle of Western philosophy, Stoicism was born under the guidance of Zeno of Citium. Influenced by the teachings of Socrates and the Cynics, Zeno founded a school at the Painted Porch, from which the name Stoic originated. Stoic luminaries like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus later carried the torch of this philosophy. The Stoics believed that true happiness didn't lie in wealth or recognition, but in virtue and wisdom. They emphasized that life is not about what happens to us, but about how we respond to it. While the external world is volatile and uncontrollable, our internal world, our thoughts and actions, is within our control. This philosophy aimed to help individuals live in harmony with nature, accept what comes their way, and find inner peace through self-control and virtue. As one of the most revered emperors of ancient Rome, Marcus Aurelius, a devout Stoic, wrote, Life is short, and the nature of existence is ephemeral. Live as if on a mountain. Similar to how Jesus taught his followers not to accumulate treasures on earth, Marcus Aurelius reminds us of the transient nature of life and the importance of living with purpose and meaning. With these profound reflections on life, death, and virtue, it's natural to question 
how Stoic teachings align with those of Jesus. Did the humble son of a carpenter in the distant corner of Judea have knowledge of these thoughts? Or is it possible that he independently arrived at similar conclusions about human nature and the purpose of life? As we ponder these questions, let's now journey to Judea and explore the life and teachings of Jesus himself. Stay with us as we uncover possible connections and insights that bridge these two philosophies. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening exploration. In the heart of the Roman Empire, in the marginalized region of Judea, Jesus of Nazareth was born around 4 BC, the son of Mary and Joseph. He came of age in a world dominated by political and religious forces, and while he was a revolutionary figure in his time, historical records about his life are scarce. Most of what we know comes from the New Testament Gospels. The context of Jesus' life was one of Roman oppression and religious turmoil. However, instead of leading a revolt against the invaders, Jesus proposed an internal revolution of the heart and spirit. His teachings, deeply rooted in Jewish tradition, reveal surprising parallels with Stoic philosophy. Consider, for example, the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. His words reflect a mindset that values humility and detachment from the snares of ego, something the Stoics would also appreciate. Furthermore, in the Gospel according to Luke, Jesus warns, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. This concept mirrors the core of Stoic thought. True wealth lies not in material possessions, but in the richness of spirit and character. Jesus, with his timeless wisdom, invites his followers to transcend worldly concerns and focus on eternal truths. Just like the Stoics, he acknowledges that while we cannot control everything that happens to us, we can control how we respond to it. It is precisely at this intersection of teachings, at the crossroads between Stoic virtue and Jesus' message, that we discover surprising similarities. Serenity in the face of adversity, self-control in the face of temptations, and the relentless pursuit of virtue are ideals that both philosophies share. So, can we assert that Jesus was a proto-Stoic, or is it more appropriate to say that both paths, though separated by culture and tradition, converge on universal truths? At the core of Stoic philosophy lies a fundamental idea. The virtuous life is the only one worth living. For the Stoics, virtue is not merely a set of moral rules. It is the very essence of a good and meaningful life. Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism, defined virtue as a consistent selective disposition in accordance with reason. In essence, virtue is to live in harmony with reason and nature. Now let's consider Jesus' serenity, even at the height of his suffering. Crucified, he demonstrated a profound acceptance and understanding of his fate, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. His serenity in the face of adversity is, in many ways, comparable to the serenity the Stoics aspire to achieve. Epictetus, one of the great Stoics, wrote in his Enchiridion, it's not the events that disturb people, but their judgments about them. This serves as a reminder that our reaction to adversity is often more determining than the adversities themselves. The connection between Jesus and the Stoics in the pursuit of virtue and self-control is clear. Both see the external world as something uncontrollable, but firmly believe that the individual has mastery over their internal response. Now imagine for a moment Jesus conversing with Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher-emperor. While the former warns about the dangers of wealth and the difficulty of a rich person entering the kingdom of heaven, Marcus Aurelius reflects on the ephemeral nature of earthly possessions. If they were together, they might share profound insights about our relationship with the material world. Join us 
as we continue to explore these thought-provoking connections between Jesus and the Stoics, uncovering timeless wisdom that resonates across cultures and centuries. Picture a serene afternoon in Jerusalem, where the age-old stones of the temple reflect the golden light of dusk. In a quiet corner, Jesus of Nazareth, with his serene and profound expression, meets Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher Emperor of Rome. Though separated by decades and geography, an invisible bond seems to unite their thoughts. Marcus begins, I see in your teachings a profound wisdom, one that would resonate in the streets of Rome. You speak of detachment from riches, while I have reflected on the ephemeral nature of earthly possessions. How do you see the relationship between man and his belongings? Jesus, looking at the emperor with understanding, replies, Truly, I say, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The emperor nods, acknowledging the depth of the message. In response, Marcus continues, In my meditations I wrote that very little is needed for a happy life. It is all within you, in your way of thinking. Riches often serve as a distraction from this truth. Both leaders, from their different contexts, converge on a common understanding. Material possessions themselves are not the problem. The challenge lies in the attachment we confer upon them, in how we allow them to define our worth and sense of purpose. As this imaginary conversation fades into the night, a profound question emerges for all of us. What value do we place on material things in our lives? Do they define us, or are they simply tools we use to contribute to our well-being and that of those around us? However, we cannot ignore the fundamental variations in their views and essential practices. Jesus, with his unconditional love for others and call to service, and Seneca, with his emphasis on virtue and the well-being of the community, present two complementary perspectives. But what if both could share a moment together? In a serene setting overlooking a vast landscape of olive trees and golden fields, Jesus meets Seneca, the prominent philosopher and advisor of the Roman Empire. The shadows of dusk begin to lengthen as they both share reflections on a theme that transcends generations. Love for one's neighbor and contribution to the common good. Seneca, with his firm and thoughtful voice, raises the question, I have observed, Master, that your doctrines place great emphasis on love for one's neighbor. In Rome, we also value the well-being of our society, although we often see it through the lens of justice and duty. How do you perceive this love, and how can it manifest in concrete actions? Jesus, reflecting an unfathomable depth in his gaze, replies, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Gospel according to Mark 12.31 He emphasizes that true love seeks not its own benefit, but unfolds in actions for the good of others. It is through this selfless love that a true sense of community is built. Seneca nods and reflects, in our Stoic discussions, we explore the idea of sympathy, the interconnectedness of all beings. I see resonances with your words. In my writings I have said, the well-being of all humanity is interconnected. If there is a common benefit, then it is connected. It seems we are both speaking of a deeper understanding of how each individual action can impact the very fabric of our society. Jesus smiles gently and adds, Every act of kindness, however small, is like a stone thrown into a lake. The ripples expand, touching hearts and lives beyond what our eyes can see. So it is with the kingdom of God, like a seed that, though small, grows and bears abundant fruit. Seneca, with an expression of recognition, concludes, So, though our paths may differ in their foundations and practices, the essence of love and the pursuit of the common good is a thread that binds us.
each of us has the capacity to enrich and uplift our society through our daily actions and decisions. As the sun sets on the horizon, leaving a sky tinged with oranges and purples, the conversation between Jesus and Seneca fades, but its resonance endures. It reminds us of the eternal importance of compassion, empathy, and unconditional love in building a better world. And as we reflect on this profound conversation, we turn to another exchange of ideas between Jesus and Epictetus, where we will explore their fundamental differences in beliefs and practices. The air becomes dense in a hypothetical room, where in one corner Jesus sits with his compassionate and serene gaze. In front of him, Epictetus with a thoughtful expression. The clash of two great minds who, though sharing universal values about humanity, morality, and purpose, originated from different foundations of belief. Epictetus begins, Master from Nazareth, throughout my life I have maintained that our will is linked to reason, and through it we attain true freedom. What do you think about the nature of human will and its relation to faith? Jesus, always thoughtful, responds, True freedom comes from knowing the truth, and the truth will set you free. Gospel according to John. He continues, Faith is the assurance of what we hope for, the conviction of what we do not see. Letter to the Hebrews. Epictetus nods, recognizing the depth of the response. In our reflections, we maintain that reason, when aligned with nature, guides us toward virtue. Faith, from my perspective, requires a suspension of reason, and though powerful, it can veer us away from objective truth. To this Jesus replies, Every tree is known by its fruit. Faith, when genuine, does not contradict reason, but transcends it, guiding the heart to deeper and eternal truths. Epictetus, quoting one of his own teachings, says, we are not disturbed by events, but by the interpretation we make of them. In this sense, our interpretation of the world, guided by reason, determines our well-being. The air in the room subtly changes, not into tension, but into deep contemplation. Both acknowledge that, while they share the desire to guide humanity towards inner peace and virtue, their paths fundamentally diverge in how they perceive and relate to the world. These differences prompt us to consider the theological roots of Christianity and the Stoic worldview. While Christianity upholds a theocentric view of the universe, Stoicism leans towards a perspective based on nature and reason. Both philosophies have their merits and offer us different lenses through which to interpret and experience the world. With this framework in mind, it's essential to delve deeper into these differences and consider how these perspectives can enrich each other. In our next segment, we will delve into Christian theology and the Stoic view of the world, seeking to find a balance between faith and reason. The room, still imbued with the previous dialogue between Jesus and Epictetus, is filled with a new air of reflection. While Christian faith proposes a personal God who intervenes and cares for humanity, Stoicism perceives the cosmos as a rational entity, a totality governed by what they called logos, or universal reason. Christianity, with its rich theology, speaks to us of a loving God who became man in Jesus of Nazareth. This divinity, in an incomprehensible act of love, incarnates to redeem humanity from its flaws. It is a religion based on relationship, on the interaction between the divine and the human, between the Creator and His creatures. On the other hand, Stoics see the world as a reflection of a logical and natural order. It's not necessarily a personal God who governs, but a universal reason, a logos that permeates and structures all existence. Seneca, one of the most prominent Stoics, mentioned in his letters to Lucilius, God is not separate from the world. 
he is within it. This perspective promotes the idea that living in harmony with nature and its laws is the path to wisdom and virtue. Despite their differences, both views can complement each other. The theological focus of Christianity emphasizes the importance of relationship and grace, while Stoicism, with its emphasis on self-discipline and self-control, can provide a practical framework for living out that grace in everyday life. At the end of this exploration, we are faced with an essential question. Is it possible to combine the depths of Christian theology with the practical wisdom of Stoicism? Can Jesus, with his revolutionary lessons on love and grace, be considered in some way a Stoic Messiah? In Rome, a renowned New Testament expert at Duke University highlights how Stoicism and Christianity share parallels and points of convergence throughout history. In the second century, Tertullian referred to Seneca as Siep Nostra, or Our Seneca, and Jerome simply called him Ours. Augustine in The City of God also acknowledges Seneca's influence. This intersection between both currents is palpable, leading to an intriguing question. Is it possible to harmonize being a Christian with being a Stoic? Some attempt to unify these philosophies, while others emphasize their differences. Although full integration may be challenging, it is recognized that a Christian can complement their faith with Stoic reflections and vice versa. Josephson, specializing in biblical studies, quotes Seneca to emphasize the importance of absorbing wisdom from various philosophical sources. Josephson comments, While Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life for me, I am convinced that Stoicism has enriched my understanding and Christian devotion. Kevin Bosch, a specialist in clinical psychology and author of Between the Porch and the Cross, supports this view and adds, During my research, I discovered surprising similarities between Epictetus's ideas and some modern Christian stances on issues like family and reproductive ethics. Without labeling the Stoics as Christians, it is undeniable that they offer enriching perspectives for everyone. In both Stoic and Christian scriptures, we find parallel lessons on number one, cultivating contentment. I do not say this out of need, for I have learned to be content regardless of my circumstances. I know how to live humbly, and I know how to abound. Paul, it is the attitude, not the circumstance, that should be evaluated. We must investigate whether the rich man can be content if he falls into poverty, and if the poor man can be content if he rises to wealth. Seneca. Number two. Embracing Forgiveness Over Revenge But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Jesus, only a small-minded person, exacts revenge. Seneca Number three, the golden rule of kindness. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Jesus, for a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. Seneca Number four, contemplating mortality. Think about your end at all times, and you will never sin. Cyric. 736. You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do, say, and think. Marcus Aurelius. Number five, letting go of anxiety and worry. Worry weighs a person down, but an encouraging word cheers a person up. Proverbs 12.25 Today I escaped anxiety, or no, I discarded it because it was within me, in my own perceptions, not outside. Marcus Aurelius, number six, the power of love. Above all, love each other deeply. Peter, be free from passion and yet full of love. Marcus Aurelius, number seven, the value of discipline. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Hebrews 12.11 If you obtain anything good with labor, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. 
Musonius Rufus. Number eight, taming anger. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Ecclesiastes 7.9. Nothing is more deafening than anger, nothing more deadly. It's a hard master and a treacherous companion. If you concede, it will take you over completely. If you fight it, it will make you exhausted. Seneca number 9, Seeking Tranquility. Be still and know that I am God. Psalms 46.10, transition from one unselfish action to another with God in mind. Only there can you find steady quietude. Marcus Aurelius, number 10, following worthy examples. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Paul, choose someone whose way of life, as well as words and whose very face, is mirroring the disposition that lies behind it, have won your approval. Be always pointing him out to yourself, either as your guardian or as your model. Seneca. Number 11. Loving your enemies. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Romans 12.20. Goodness is invincible, provided it be genuine, not plastered on. What could even the malice of a foe do to you if you were still to show him kindness, and in case the opportunity offers, expose his errors, admonish him, but quietly, not in public? It is your business to make a good character, but the character of another no one can make. Marcus Aurelius On this captivating journey through time and philosophy, we've explored the intriguing possibility that Jesus, the Messiah of Christian tradition, might have shared some striking similarities with the great Stoic thinkers. Despite their distinct approaches and viewpoints, both philosophies converge on universal truths about humanity, morality, and purpose. While Christianity plunges deep into the realms of divine love and personal relationship with God, Stoicism provides practical tools to navigate life in harmony with nature and find inner peace amidst the turbulence of existence. As we contemplate these profound teachings, it becomes evident that, irrespective of our religious affiliations, there are invaluable lessons we can incorporate into our daily lives. In the words of the Gospel of John, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Whether you resonate with the teachings of Jesus, find wisdom in the reflections of Marcus Aurelius, or simply seek a deeper understanding of yourself and the world, there is an invitation here to live with purpose, integrity, and a love that transcends all barriers. And with that, we wrap up our discussion for today. But before you exit this video, I urge you to take a moment. Below, you'll discover links to our channel's exclusive store and other valuable resources worth exploring. Please don't forget to comment, Dare Me, so I know you've journeyed with us till the end. Your comments matter, and I eagerly await your insights. As always, I read all the comments, and I'll be watching for yours. Stay tuned to the screen to catch the next video that will be displayed right here. It's a treat you won't want to miss. Finally, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for your attention and engagement. May you be with the Creator.